hi guys welcome back to my channel as you know we are in uganda and we used to watch um the horror stories of idi amin and little did we know that one day we are going to take a tour of his torture chambers and their kingdom but before we go there this is what i'm having for lunch i'm having posho with kebabs beef kebabs and gravy and my husband's having sukuma wiki with posho really delicious we really enjoyed the meal and now we are getting ready to head off to the palace and um, just go and learn a little bit about the history of uganda so stay tuned <laughs> So this is the king's palace. And we also saw a few the history about the Buganda kingdom. We have the king's palace there. We are not allowed to enter inside the house because it is the office for the king. In the kingdom, we respect the king's office. He's but staying there? No, he does not stay there. We shall get to know the reasons why he does. Okay. Yeah. But you're allowed to take the pictures. Okay. If it is not here, well, we can go inside. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, you can take the pictures. We have Idi Amin's canon. You will yeah. be able to receive the history about Idi Amin, okay. one of the great men here in Africa. We have the torture chambers of Idi Amin, where he killed thousands of Ugandans. This one? Yeah. On the left side? Yeah. So <laughs> that place is also there. Uh, we have a mini bar cloth workshop. Shall be narrate how the backlog is manufactured. We see. Okay. This is the first king. Yeah, but he's just the second. Yeah, that's the second king, right? The first is here. So these are all the ones. This was Queen. Eh? Yeah, Queen. The mother, mm -hmm. Queen Mother Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is the oh, current. She is beautiful. Yeah, the, the Queen. Wow. The King, the current King. The current King. And the current Queen. Yeah. So the names that are given here are part of the, the historical names in terms of the Uganda names. Okay. Then we have the Uganda names. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think it's the right way. have the Kabaka's birthday run and every time there is a new theme. So this year's theme was fighting HIV and most of the people were here. A hundreds of them, I'll send you the picture. Ah, thank we're you. actually in Southern. So wow. we would come and then uh, Kabaka sends us off from the, the field. It's just down there. Mm -hmm. And people rain, those who rain 25 kilometers, mm -hmm. those who rain 15 kilometers, 10 kilometers and 5 kilometers. So the palace is, uh, is 15 kilometers wow. around. So you can run right around the, the, around the, the whole palace. palace is 15 kilometers. Yeah, when you run around. So you're looking from once again? Thank you. So right now we are in the palace called the Mango Palace, not Mango. <laughs> mango. It's called the mango palace. Okay. Because uh, the mango is a fruit, then the mango, those are, the, those are now the grinding stones that our ancestors used in terms of grinding millet, in terms of grinding the local herbs, they used to have long ago. Because long ago we had no tablets, so that's why our ancestors loved much to use the, the grinding stones to grind the leaves of the of different plants so that now they can come up with a, a herb the different diseases that we had long ago. So this place was, the palace was established in 1885 on the regime of 
Mm, that is a very long name. <laughs> Can you please repeat that name? So it was called Sekawaka Danieli Mwanga Wasamulekere II. So he established this palace in 1885. So this palace, it was just on a, it's long ago, it used to be a forest. The way how Kampala is. So Kampala, the way how you see it, it's not the way how it was long ago. So the name Kampala, it came from the Impalas. So, the, it was, so Kampala came from Impala. The, the Impala. Okay. So Mwanga loved much to hunt. So his palace mm. was in Munyonyo, but he used to come on these hills to mainly hunt the Impalas. So mm -hmm. that's what they used to say, the hills of the Impalas. Or so, okay. Impala. so that's the name of the name of Kampala city, uh -huh. the capital city of Uganda. So it was just a forest. So he had now to establish his palace here, mainly because. He really saw it like a, a fruitful position for him to establish his palace here. So that's why he had to do this. So the palace is seated on 200 acres. Wow. That 200 is the total acres. Size of it. Because the whole fence, mm -hmm. it covers 6.5 kilometers round. Mm -hmm. That's the entire palace. So we have schools, we have playgrounds, we have expo grounds. We used to also have rally grounds for the motocross. The rally cars, but we, we, are, we are not having them anymore because accidents really happen. And the palace, there's no way how we can shed blood in the palace. Mm -hmm. That's the main reason as to why the king's not sleeping here. Okay. Culturally, traditionally in Uganda, the king's not allowed to sleep in a place where was bloodshed or massacre people. Okay. So in 1966, this palace was attacked hmm. by Idi Amin Dada and Obote. Obote was not a Muganda. Idi Amin was not a Muganda. So those two people were coming from northern part. Obote was Ilangi. Idi Amin Dada was a Kakwa. So Idi Amin was just the chief command of the army. Obote was the prime minister, the one who fought for Uganda's independence in 1963 on 9th October. So you got Buganda Kingdom, it was the first to exist before Uganda. Because mm -hmm. even the name Uganda, it came from Buganda. So the way how the British used to pronounce Uganda. The P try to be difficult for them to pronounce out. So they used to say Uganda. That's why the nation was given the name Uganda. Uh -huh. But Uganda, in the whole of Uganda, we have many, we have five kingdoms. So those kingdoms, so they really loved much to exist. They existed. But Uganda, it existed, but for it, it was more cultural and more organized. So that's why when the British came into Uganda, they loved much to settle in Uganda, mainly because they had a system of governance. That was the clan system. Because at first we started with five clans, but today we have 56 clans. Mm. So my clan is a buffalo because of the name Bugembe. Bugembe. Bugembe Michael. So our duty in the palace or in the kingdom is to lift the king on the heart, on the shoulders. Because long ago uh -huh. there were no cars, there were no vehicles. So we used to now to move our king from point A to point B with the use of the shoulders. Mm -hmm. So I'm not allowed to eat a buffalo meat. Uh -huh. I'm not allowed to marry a woman from a buffalo clan. Oh, you can't marry each other? Yes. Because Interesting. when I marry a woman from a buffalo clan, I will be like marrying my own sister. Mm -hmm. So my mother, she's coming from the antelope clan. Uh -huh. So which means I can't marry a woman from the antelope clan. I will be like marrying my mother. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> so you can have a photo with the house, so okay. the royal house. It is called Tuekobe. It was constructed long ago on the regime of King David Tua. The one who became a king when he was just one year and eight months. Uh -huh. the one one who, year, eight months? Yes, the one who introduced many good things for Buganda Kingdom. The one who brought football in Uganda. The one who introduced football, that's why you have the clan tournament and the county tournaments. Uh -huh. So the one who introduced the Gao Child Education System in Uganda. Mm -hmm. the also the one and only, the one who introduced the couch of now accepting that is to eat the chicken and eggs. Women weren't allowed to eat We're chicken and eggs. To eat the chicken and eggs. Why? Because the chicken in our introduction ceremony, it's part of the dowry thing. Dowry. Uh -huh. So when okay. you eat the chicken, which means you are now reducing the chances of your brother to get a beautiful lot to marry. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. I've already eaten the chicken. Very the interesting. Item, that brother is going to take from the family. That's 
Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so this house is normally today being used as an official office okay. for the king. So he normally comes here to attend to the chiefs of Uganda, attending to different ceremonies and occasions of Uganda. But afterwards, it's now being driven back to his palace in Banda. Chiraka, that's, mm -hmm. that's along Jinja Road. That's okay. where he sleeps. Okay. But here he doesn't sleep here, mainly because of the 1966 war. Uh -huh. That's so yes. this war was, the, the, the palace was captured, Mutesa II was overthrown from power, he went out of Uganda, he went mm -hmm. to London. Mm -hmm. Mutesa took, took over power as the second president. So when okay. he took over power as the second president, he turned this place from a palace into a military base. Mm. That's why you saw a gun outside. Yes. It is representing something. So when this place was turned to be a military base, so which means all the royal houses, because look, they used, to, they used to stay in those traditional houses, so mm -hmm. they were now destroyed and damaged. That's mm -hmm. why they're not existing here. Mm -hmm. So they also had to construct those military officers. The houses mm -hmm. that you see around, yes. those are now military officers. So in 1967, Obote declared Uganda's republic, so which means it had now abolished the royal monarch system that used to exist. That's why in 1993, that's when our king was restored back. So we are happy and now we are being given back the palace to us as a Bugana king. Oh. So let's head down. Seeing a lion sculpture at the entrance. Uh -huh. So he's a lion. He's a lion. Okay. Because whenever he says something, it's yeah. ever final. Uh -huh. It's no a of, final say. He says final say. So there's no need of discussing about what the king says. Mm -hmm. So that's why if at all I'm greeting my king, my lion, so I'm supposed to show him that he's totally a lion in which way. I'm supposed to make to sleep straight before him. I make some good push-ups for him. Push-ups? Yes. How many? <laughs> good push-ups. Yeah. Push-ups to mainly show him that I'm strong enough. Then afterwards, you stand up politely. Because you carry him. Yes. Uh, you stand up politely while facing him. Then uh -huh. afterwards, you go backwards. You are not allowed to turn this back uh -huh. at him. It's like you accidentally meet a lion in the jungle. Um, you there don't, is no you way walk how backward. You can turn the back at the yes. lion because you don't know it's planned. Yes. So, with that, you need to turn the back after seeing that the king is not seeing you. Mm -hmm. Because long ago, the kings used to have spears. Yes. Whenever you could now backside him, you had chances on now being speared. To receive your spear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So, the women, the moment you step, you, you, you make a foot into Buganda, you be qualified to become a wife. <laughs> watch out, watch out. <laughs> husband. Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, husband. So in Uganda we also have a special road. Okay. A mile, a road. It is called Kabaka Njaga Road or the King mm -hmm. Lasumi Road. Okay. Straight road. Okay. Road. Yeah. Road so it links the palace. Who oh, is well, the parliament? That's the parliament of Uganda, the first parliament that Uganda has ever had. Wow! It was constructed in 1953, 1955. Yeah. So, on this road, uh -huh. you have to round about. Uh -huh. So, when the king is from his palace heading to the parliament, he's supposed to be given stone. Uh -huh. So, these four stones that you see here are supposed to be removed when the king is moving. Okay, so you just so move straight. the Queen straight. of Uganda, she can have that chance. Uh -huh. Just in the same convoy with the king or in the same car with the king. Uh -huh. But when she's just alone with her convoy, she can't move straight. She so has to go around. It's because for her, she has a little seat. Mm -hmm. So on the same uh -huh. road, we also have sculptures of different, different plants that we have in Uganda. Mm -hmm. It's because some plants are animals, some are plants, some are yeah. birds. But if, like, if at all I find someone hunting a buffalo, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to hunt that person again. Oh, I'm so you have to I'm hunt? I'm supposed to protect my clan. Uh-huh. So when, okay. I, when I'm, when I'm, those people coming from a, a like uh, another clan, like uh, maybe a fish clan, mm -hmm. they're not supposed to eat that fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the way how we are now preserving the nature. Okay. In, so it became a military base at one stage, that's why there's these guns? Yeah. 
Okay. So this gun is here uh, mainly depicting uh, two things. Mm -hmm. this, this was also in Celebes. And the second thing, uh, Idi Amin, that uh, the time when he became a president in 1971, because in 1971, Dr. Milton Obote, the one who was the president, he received an invitation calling him to go to Singapore to attend to the Commonwealth meeting. Mm -hmm. So before him leaving, he had doubt to leave all the powers in the hands of Idi Amin Dada, his second one in Commonwealth under a verbal agreement. Mm -hmm. He told Amin, I'm leaving with all my powers, but when I come back from Singapore to Uganda, you have to give me back my powers. Uh -huh. So Amin was like, you, you trust me, I trust you. So which means when you come back from Singapore to Uganda, I'll just need to give you back your what? Your, your powers. powers. So with all in that statement, it really made Obote to go to Singapore, leaving mm -hmm. the powers in the hands of Idi Amin. So when Obote reached in Singapore, he made an alarm to his friend. You know, my friend, I have reached safely in Singapore, mm -hmm. taking my people, but remember what we agreed upon. Yes. So I mean, was like, for the few days and hours I've been the president of Uganda, I have totally enjoyed it. <laughs> so which okay, means it's okay. better for you to stay in Singapore, because for you, you love to to go to Singapore. And me, staying, I take over here. Of course. You are no more a president, I'm hey, now the president of Uganda. So that's yeah. the way how Idi Amin Dada took over power. Mm -hmm. He never fought. Mm -hmm. So he took over power in that easy way. And the, the so, guy in Singapore so with didn't that, fight. Idi Amin Dada mm -hmm. became a president, a third president of Uganda. So mm -hmm. the Islamic states nearby, when they heard that, they became too happy. Okay. Because Amin was a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So when Gaddafi heard that, Gaddafi had an interest of now coming to Uganda. Mm -hmm. So he had now to use to like that chance. With which way? He had now to grant gifts mm -hmm. to his fellow Muslim, the guns. Uh -huh. to mainly hope him to secure the territories of Uganda from mm -hmm. there would be enemies mm -hmm. that Amin can now have mm -hmm. that's why he gave him the guns so Aida Amin Dada had now to keep these guns in this palace in the Mitali palace mm -hmm. the Mitali base so the guns were now scattered around because were not, not all without being kept in one place mm -hmm. so he had now to call for great architects who had now come in help him construct an armory where he can keep this I mean, weapon safely so that's why he had now to call upon the Israels. Okay. So they came in to help him construct something great and strong so that now he can keep in the what? The army weapons. So they came in, they constructed that armory mm -hmm. for just one year. And after the construction, Idi Amin was just in his state house in Entebbe mm -hmm. because he loved much to stay in Entebbe. Mm -hmm. So the chief engineer had now to approach him, uh, claiming that he was now collecting his money mm -hmm. from Idi Amin. Amin was like, I think. And I remember, it's me who brought a plan to you and mm -hmm. a deal. So which means it's me who's supposed to bring the payment to you, mm -hmm. not you to demand the president of Uganda. Hey. How can you demand the president of Uganda? So with that, he expelled them away from Uganda, mm -hmm. even without begin, giving them a single a dollar. Mm -hmm. A single dollar. Okay. Mm. Okay. So these are the expensive cars that Sir Edward Felix Mutesa too. The first president of Uganda used to drive. Mm -hmm. So in 1963, the time when Mutesa II became a president, he received his first gift mm -hmm. from the Queen of England. That was a Mercedes Benz, a Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. So after now enjoying the comfortability of a Rolls Royce, he saw that there was a need of now purchasing another expensive car. Mm -hmm. So he purchased a Daimler. So Daimler? From, yes, from a okay. Daimler to a Cadillac. From mm -hmm. a Cadillac to a Bentley. Mm -hmm. Those were now the expensive cars that Mutesa used to drive. So Obote, after taking over power, he really saw that there was a need of now destroying these expensive cars for Obote, mm. for Mutesa too. So he was like now demolishing or vandalizing the legacy for Mutesa mm. too. So he, wanted, he never wanted to see these cars anymore. So that's why they were now vandalized and destroyed. So that Daimler car, it was buried underground. For mm -hmm. us, we got it underground. Wow. Because we were not there at the time when they, they were fighting. Mm -hmm. So we got it underground, this cars. They're just in car parts, but we're now planning to put a glass mm -hmm. to protect them well yes. in a time from now. But this year, we managed now to make one car. It was a race race, mm -hmm. so we maintained it. It's now in good condition, so the king is now using it in his palace oh, in Banda, the race okay. race. So we managed to give, him, to give it back to him, like a birthday present mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. But it was a car that his father used to use. Oh, yeah. yeah.
We have the green banana, we have the sweet banana, yeah. those are small and sweet. Yeah. Yeah. They're just huge. Mm -hmm. you, that's where we were. Okay, that's where we were. Right there. I was it's showing Baba. Wow. Yeah. We have reached your place, and that was totally constructed by the Israelis. So okay. Idi Amin Dada constructed this place, or he ordered for the construction of this place to mainly keep in his guns that mm -hmm. he had received from Gaddafi of Libya. But this place was constructed for just one year, and after the construction, Idi Amin was just at this place in the, in the Entebbe, the state house, and the chief engineer approached him, pleading to give him the money that they normally worked for, because Idi Amin Dada pledged to pay them. So Idi Amin was like, I remember it's me who brought a deal for you, to you guys. Mm -hmm. So which means it's me who's supposed to bring the payment to you, but not you to make the what? To collect money from me. Mm -hmm. So which means you should, you should now wait for me to come to you to make you the payments to you, man. Mm -hmm. Not you to come to me as a president. So with that, Idi Amin Dada saw it like a disrespectful to thee. Mm -hmm. So that's why it was like, since you have disrespected me, I think it's better for you to go out of my country. I want to see you anyway. Okay. So he expelled them, even without giving them a single coin. Mm. So this place was constructed for free. Mm. But many people lost their, their lives here. Mm. So he used it as an armory for just eight months. And after the eight months, he turned it to be a torture chamber. Mm. Politicians, engineers, doctors, mm. the professors, Why doctors? and also uh, <laughs> some medical men. Mm. Yeah, all that also killed in this place. So I'll be explaining more okay. when we are just in time. Okay. Okay. Because uh, the main intention for the person in this place was to be an armory. Okay. Yeah. So when they made this to be an armory, after mm -hmm. the eight months, Idi Amin Dada received rumors that, you know what? You may think that we're leading people well, but mm -hmm. people are complaining a lot. Hmm. Professors are saying that you never went to school, hmm. so which means you don't possess the qualities of a what? A good president. Oh, okay. Politicians are saying you don't have any political idea. Hmm. So they're saying any time they're going to scrap you off from power. So hmm. it was like, I thought maybe I was leading them well. It's mm -hmm. better for me now to turn my mind. Hey. So he turned it from a military, like from an armory, he had now to block the ventilation systems. Hmm. So that now he can capture the would be professors. The professors yes. number one. Yes. The professors, the politicians. So the way how they used to capture them, they used to blindfold them. Can't do uh -huh. Then afterwards they used to put them in the trucks. They used to drive them in the city for some good hours. In the their Not city. so they get lost, they lose their coordinates. They lose the hope. Uh -huh. They become hopeless. So hmm. they used to move them around in the city like for eight hours. Mm -hmm. To make them think maybe they're now being taken, maybe in Arua, Guru, mm. but again, they're still in the same city. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards, they had not been left in this place. Mm. So the moment you got into this place, you had no way of getting out when you're still alive. Only your body was brought out. Once you go in, you don't come out? Yes. Okay, here yeah, now. Hey. Wow. So these are the rooms? Yes, there are five rooms. Five? Yes. So Very dark. Rooms. So in the middle of the room, they used to put in like 15 prisoners. 15? 50. 50? 50 prisoners, just being standing on his like standing, being packed in one room. Mm. So uh, sometimes some people normally died and they just remained standing, you know? They died standing? standing. Yes. Because the moment you got into a room, you were never given food. Mm. You were never given food and water, so the oxygen was not enough for you. Mm. So you had to die of suffocation and also those two impacts. So, yes. So, because at the entrance, there used to exist two metallic doors at the entrance. So there was a sliding door at the mm. entrance at first. So there was also another metallic door inside. So which means you had no way of now escaping away from this place. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So the rooms were constructed raised above the floor where we are standing mainly because uh -huh. since it was to be an armory, the army weapons were totally heavy for mm -hmm. those great military men to lift mm -hmm. or to carry. So which means they had now to be hoped by the carriage of the weapons by aid of the what? The trucks. Mm -hmm. Because the truck is a little bit raised. 
So the trucks now could reverse this void and easily offload it and go to the truck. So what did the people see to these roads? So since that now there were the same trucks being used to capture, mm -hmm. to collect, there would be uh, 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 captives from different locations. So they used to blindfold them, they used to put in the trucks, then afterwards they used to bring them into these rooms. Mm. So the moment you put into this, this place, you had no way of getting out when it's still alive. Mm. So they either, they either killed you using bullets, or they used to shoot you, or like uh, to hang you to death. Mm. They could now uh, behead you. Yeah. Sometimes they had now to make you to stand in electrified water. So where we are standing right now on the walls, there is a watermark. I don't know whether you can see. Uh -huh. That's where the watermark moves around. So these two water at that specific level, and they made the prisoners to stand in this water. For them, they yes, for them they thought maybe they're now being given a second chance to life mm -hmm. because they made them to come from a room that had that were, had no water, that had no food, now to come into water, not thinking that they made them to stand in this water expecting for them to insert an electric cable in what? Mm. In this water. Mm -hmm. So because of interest there, there's that yeah, electric cable that was cut. When it used to be long, it used to touch the ground. Mm -hmm. Because the same cable that was used to insert, used to be inserted inside into this water, and whoever was in the water had now to be electrocuted. Mm. In that sense. So the estimated number for those Ugandans who are believed to have lost their lives here, it is 100,000 Ugandans. My goodness. Mm -hmm. But those people were only men. No mm -hmm. women, no kids, but mm -hmm. only men. Mm -hmm. So those bodies of those people, at first they used to bury them underground. Mm -hmm. But they came to know that burying them underground, it was something tiresome for them. Mm -hmm. you no, know, and digging underground, then you bury them, it was a tiresome work for them. So that's why they had now to resort now to buy down to dump them into the water bodies and also in the forests. Mm -hmm. That's why you're not seeing any cows, any birds here, mm -hmm. because of that. Okay. So in the last room, that's where they used to put water in the bodies. In the last room? Yes, like uh, in the Hmm. Hmm. And this happened in a space of what time? How long did this happen for? So this has been for like roughly like for seven, for, uh, seven years. Okay. For okay. seven years. Can you see? But we see that after, or even after the time when Idi Amin Dada was overthrown, because Idi Amin was overthrown in, from, in 1979. So Obuti, the one with that, the one he betrayed, the one who had gone to Singapore, mm -hmm. he was in Singapore and he received uh, a military support, a call from Julius Nyerere of Tanganyika. Mm -hmm. By then, because of Idi Amin Dada, or Idi Amin Dada first, he loved much to make Uganda to, uh, to have a map in a box, like a mm -hmm. box format. Mm -hmm. Not to have these cups, the way how Uganda yes, yes. It was like, I wanted to be in a square a box, format. box, yes, very Yes. <laughs> so with that, Julius Nyerere was like, if at all I allowed this president to have come up with a box map mm -hmm. of Uganda, it means I would be losing my country to his hands. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. it was like. I should now get someone who is having an interest upon now capturing capture back his powers or the presidential powers from Idi Amin Dada. So he had now to fetch for Obote. They agreed. He gave him the military support. He came back and they fought seriously. And finally, Idi Amin Dada was overthrown. Mm -hmm. So he, he knew that any time, if at all, that man was capturing him, was to be captured. Obot was going to torture him seriously in the same yes, yes. So that's why he ran away from Uganda. Where did he go? He was first went in the Congo, then from Congo he went to Libya to join Gaddafi of Libya. Hmm. Then from Libya he went in Saudi Arabia, where hmm. he finally died of syphilis and kidney failure. Hmm. That is Idi Amin Dada. So Obote wow. came back, but in, during the course of the war, he managed to capture many prisoners of war. Mm -hmm. Those were now the great military men for Idi Amin Dada the one that he used to capture innocent Ugandans mm -hmm. and to torture them. So he also captured them, he tortured them, and he killed them in the same way. In the same place. Okay. As a way of revenge. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if every nation has deep history, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Chambers can now see them clearly. So, this is where the prisoners were held. No food, guys. Once you enter, you can't come out. Mm. Wow. Okay. So Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Beautiful patchworks. They used to dress uh, culturally and uh, putting on animal skins mm -hmm. because uh, now they are considered to be great, great hunters. Mm -hmm. So, after hunting, we used now to uh, make the skins to be dried a little bit so that now they can rock something from the local mm -hmm. And after when they came to know that they had now a tree that had a soft back. Mm -hmm. So, that's what they had now to scrap over the back of the tree. Then they started now around it using these tools. Mm -hmm. They are totally different because of the different structures that they have. Okay. So if I told the bug is totally the beach, and we need a little bit to raise it a little bit, we use this rail mm -hmm. with the use of the shell, the stretch marks. So if I told you we do one thing, stretch a little bit. So the way you're supposed to pound it, you're supposed to pound in this way. You're supposed to pound in this way. But for this, it's already dry. It's not wet. Okay. So okay. if at all it was wet enough, it would have stretched a little mm -hmm. bit. But it's not going to stretch anymore because it's already dry. Mm -hmm. in that what is this the virus? No. <laughs> <laughs> it looks to be, but it's not. It's just a back of it. It's, leather. it's not leather. Our traditional cloth. The other tree that we see. That tree here. Out here. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We the just remove the back of the tree. The one which is growing. It. Yeah. Yes. So you may uh, when you are just uh, you can when you observe it you may think it be, it's leather but it's not leather. You can touch and feel it. It's not leather. This is our traditional like like the okay. culture wear. Okay. Okay. So how do you get it to be like this? You pound it a lot. Yeah. 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 Can they, the world know our traditional or culture growth outside the world? Thanks. So with the idea of now painting or coming up with these paintings. Mm -hmm. So we mainly painted uh, our uh, traditional ways on livings in the community and also the plants that we have in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Plus also other animals that we have in Uganda in all the tourism sites. Okay. Yeah, um, national parks. So the paintings are either for sale and mm -hmm. the prices are totally negotiable and friendly. Mm -hmm. So it's not a supermarket mm -hmm. because in the supermarket you don't need, you, there is no need of negotiating. Okay. But here I will be giving a good price if I tell you love any art piece here. Mm -hmm. So we never pay, we never framed them mainly. We would want it now to ease the way we can take them back to maybe to Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Because when you frame, it becomes totally heavy for you to take. Yes, yes. Yeah, but when it's not framed, you just need to roll it. We mm -hmm. pack it for you. Reaching back in Zimbabwe, you mm -hmm. need to turn at the back of it. Then you iron it. It becomes totally flat the way how it is before. Yeah. Okay. So that now you can frame it when you reach wow. in Zimbabwe. Oh. Something that you can take from Buganda Kingdom that can mm -hmm. make you remember the whole of Buganda. Do you want a bit? So if I told you see any interesting at this, mm -hmm. how much are the smalls? Which one? This is the Kabaka's road, guys. Can you see it goes straight there to the Kabakanja Gala Road? Wow. Don't take my legs. Wow. 
So there you go guys, I really really enjoyed this tour and the history of Uganda. I really learnt a lot and oh, an amazing day. Let me know what you think and if there's anything that you would like to add concerning Uganda. That's very interesting, let us know. We had an amazing day, be sure to subscribe to our channel and we will see you on the next one.